everyone welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new and welcome to my October 2023 monthly reset routine so we're gonna jump right into this reset routine and we're gonna start with talking about our September budget by the way I do want to mention that I already did a dedicated October budget video so if you want to see our, our October budget then check out that video and I already did a dedicated plan with me video where I set up my planner for the month so if you want to see that then check out that video but for today we're gonna recap the month of September when it comes to finances and then we'll move throughout the video so let's talk about the goals that we had originally set not just goals although it's labeled as goals I probably could start changing it to goals slash tasks or to do's or intentions but for all intents and purposes, it's labeled as goals, but it's very much goals, tasks, to-dos, just everything that we need to do and heed in any given month when it comes to finances. So first up was follow up with financial advisor. We did not do that. Pay for my clinical exam. I did not do that. Save $4,000. We did not do that. We did invest 15% of our paychecks. We paid our monthly credit card bill. We did not register our truck. We did renew our car tags. I did schedule and had a massage. I did not go to the chiropractor. That was like a potential thing. S some of these things are potential and we don't get them done and we roll them over to the next month, which I'm sure you know, because some of these things I think have been on here for like years. Also, buy my hubby a birthday gift. Mm, I don't know that I got him an actual tangible item, but I did give him a gift. I'm trying to remember what it was. I don't really recall. I think it was an experience of some sort and we went and did something, but I did do that for whatever that's worth. We did not add the truck to our car insurance. I did save $275 for sinking funds and for that, I mean that basically we have short-term savings accounts and we have different categories that we save for like car insurance. We pay our car insurance when we get the premium, which is every six months. Some people opt to pay their car insurance monthly but for us we get a huge discount by paying it every six months when we get the premium so we save up for car insurance every month so that's just one example we save up the amount that we think our car insurance is going to be in in six months we really don't really know but we always safely try to shoot for like a thousand dollars we also wanted to buy birthday supplies did that birthday party supplies we did do that sign up for BarkBox for our dog didn't do that book an airbnb book the airbnb for our cousin's trip we did that it i was the person who booked it but i didn't pay for it so i just put out just want to put out a disclaimer that money was sent to me and i booked it then we are supposed to go to an amusement park during the cousin's trip i was thinking we might buy those tickets in september but september has come and gone so it'll be in october if we're still going to the amusement park we were going to spend one day at the amusement park at the amusement park so we'll see send out my birthday wish list which I did we did not buy concert tickets I think we were possibly going to see Gucci Mane and we did not do that we I did pay my doctor copay and my medical bill I had a copay and a medical bill I did not buy my friend Michelle a birthday gift I did buy brunch supplies and I did budget for student loans in October so my student loans are going me and a lot of other people are going to have to start paying back student loans in October and so I wanted to see what that actual amount will be and so I know what that amount will be I didn't at the when I created this budget originally but now I do because I wanted to kind of research that and see because we had to wait for I had to wait for them to tell me what to pay basically is what I'm trying to say so those were our goals intentions tasks let's talk about our actual monthly budget we budgeted $59 for gym. It was $59. We budgeted no money for our phone bill because it's not due again. My bill is paid up for a year. My husband's, we pay every three months and it's not due again until November. Car payment was as budgeted at $314.34. Electricity was as budgeted at $312.70. Cable was as budgeted at $40. Pest control was as budgeted at $50.60. Internet was as budgeted at $80.30. Our mortgage was as budgeted at 
at $1,611.23. Water slash sewer was as budgeted. Nope, it wasn't as budgeted. I actually budgeted for it to be $80, but it actually came in at $90.62. I budgeted $16.99 for Amazon Music. It was $16.99. $52.14 for security for our home. It was $52. $42.19 for life insurance, which is what it was. $60.105 for pet insurance insurance which is what it was and netflix at 9.99 investing at a hundred dollars because we invest slash save twenty dollars every friday and there were five fridays in september we said we would put 275 towards sinking funds we did do that and we said we were going to save some money and we didn't do that we said we were going to save 1750 we didn't save 17.50 and the reason for that is because <laughs> i'm not going to tell you the exact amount that we paid for the that for the brunch but it wasn't under 500 and it wasn't over a thousand but this brunch was relatively expensive but the thing is that most of what was purchased like all of that stuff i get to keep the only thing i can't reuse is the food the balloons i think that's it Oh, and the flowers, which will die. And those things weren't even the most expensive. Like I had to buy, well, I didn't have to, but I chose to buy an additional table and chair set. So that was a decent amount. And then I bought some decor and stuff like that. So all of that stuff I get to reuse, but a few things I will not get to reuse. But yeah, that's kind of how I rationalized this is that this was stuff that, that we would use and have and could sell if we wanted to whatever like for the rest of our days so anywho that was pretty expensive we also had a medical bill that we had to pay and also of course I spent $140 on a massage and those were kind of like the major expenses that came from the shopping category originally we said we were going to spend about $16.50 on shopping the original budget was everything that was left which was $1,644.47 and when I say everything that was left I mean we do our budget based on saving investing paying down debt and paying our bills and then whatever is left we throw into what is called a shopping category however the shopping category consists of everything but basically a bill or a saving or investing or a debt payment so groceries any parties or anything like this gifts food for our dogs date nights you name it all of that comes from the shopping budget and so needless to say <laughs> everything that we did not save or put towards a bill or invest or put towards our debt which i consider our mortgage and our car payment to be debt we spent on various things lots of different things so many different things and insanely an insane amount of things in fact that is going to be our september budget let's talk about now our september goals and see if we met any of the september personal goals so i said that i would take a personal day which is a goal of mine every month and i did do that on my birthday september the 15th friday i took off of work as i always do and i spent the day doing a bunch of stuff. I got my hair done. I got my, what else? I got a massage. I took myself out to eat. So it was kind of like a personal day 2.0. Normally my personal days don't consist of me spending, but like maybe 20 bucks because normally I'll take myself out to eat or something. So this one was like 2.0 because it was my birthday, but I take a personal day every month and I try, well, I try to, you would think I, people who have children and other responsibilities in life I have to assume that potentially trying to take a personal day would be difficult because I feel like I don't really have that many responsibilities in life and taking a personal day is still you know it's, it does like I have to schedule this it, it won't happen unless I force it to happen I did not read two books your girl read 12 or 13 chapters I didn't even finish a book I barely finished like, I don't know, a sixth of the book. I have a long way to go. But I'm reading The Rebel King, by the way. Next up, self-care. I wanted to get my hair done, did that. Wanted to do my nails, did that. I do my own nails and I just did 
a fall set. Now, I ain't gonna lie, people were ranting and raving about this nail polish and they were saying like, I've heard people saying it goes so well with different skin tones and all that and so I bought it. But I think where I went wrong is I applied two layers and maybe I was only supposed to apply one because I, I mean, I don't know. Those are just my thoughts. But I wanted to schedule my OBGYN. I did not do that. Get a massage, did do that. Go to the chiropractor, did not do that. So because I did three of the five, I checked it off as complete for family. And for to complete home projects, that was like a sub goal. I wanted to purchase a hammock, didn't do. Organized drawers, didn't do. Problem solve the carpet shampooer, didn't do. Repair the patio ceiling, didn't do. Reset the living room, did do. Decorate for fall, did not do. Get a new fence, didn't do. That was like a dreamer. First of all, I have to also mention, I'm very much a dreamer. And so, I like to dream. <laughs> and I like to, anyway, the moral of the story is that we were kind of thinking about getting a fence, uh, a vinyl fence. It's honestly really expensive. So we were getting quotes. So when I say new fence, I meant that we were getting quotes and all of the quotes were kind of insane. And so I don't know where 7,000, 8, 9, 10,000, they varied. I don't know where that money's going to come from. So <laughs> I, I'm no longer being a dreamer. I'm being realistic. So I didn't achieve any of those things. For saving $2,000, we didn't do that. Investing $100 via stash, we did do that. Investing 15% of our paychecks, we did do. For relationships, I wanted to... Oh, one of my goals is to host or visit friends or family once per month. And so we did do that. Oh, and then I have some action steps to make that happen. So host friends and family, yes. Schedule friend dates, yes. Finalize our cousin's trip, yes. Catch up with a friend, yes. Limit social plans, no. I didn't really do that. For career, one of my goals is to study for my exam and to pass my exam. Didn't do either one of those. Business, I wanted to secure one sponsorship, and I did. But I'm trying to think, yeah. So I think it doesn't matter if, I, if the sponsorship comes about in the same month or if it doesn't. So I secured one and it'll be for October. So technically I secured one. And yeah, technically I secured one. Okay, I wanted to publish eight, to eight YouTube videos a month, which I did do, and publish four Instagram Reels. I'm going and looking now. My guess is that's asking a lot. No. And then to work out three times per week. So if we like did three times four, which would give us 12, that's about how much I'm looking to work out each month. Let's look at our tracker and see how many times we worked out. So I worked out on the 6th, the 7th, the 8th, the 9th, the 11th, 12th, 13th, 16th, 18th, 20th, 26th, 27th, and the 28th. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I met that goal. 4 times 3, 12. Yes. I think I really shoot for, ideally I try to work out like half the days of the week, every other day, half the days of the month. So like 15 times per month, but... As this is written, I met that goal. So those are our September goals. Okay, so I have this monthly reflection sheet in my digital planner that I created. And I keep saying that I can't really appreciate this from month to month, but I feel like maybe in five years when I look back on my monthly reflection for any given month or in 10 years, this will mean way more to me than what it does. But let's talk about the highs from the month of September. One was I had a pool day with my friends to celebrate my birthday and it was so fun and relaxing and I just love the water, I love the pool. It was a high moment for me and when I think of these high moments, I think of the times in any given month where I am so emerged in the present moment and in the conversation and in the experience and all of that that I am just on cloud nine. And I, I try to always be present and in the moment and I try to take note of those moments in particular because I want to remember those moments and because I want to repeat those moments. I want to have repeats of those high moments because every single time I'm with friends or family members or 
you know, stuff like that. It doesn't necessarily mean it's like I'm fully present and I identify, I would identify it or it qualifies as a high moment necessarily. So that pool day though was, and the rest of these were. I had a joint birthday party with my husband that our family put on for us. That was a high moment. My bestie got me some flowers unexpectedly, so I loved that. I also took my personal day and that was amazing. My birthday weekend was amazing as well. So these all kind of took place during on different days, all of them that I just mentioned so far. And then hanging with friends and family. Not only did we do that at my joint party and did I do that by way of friend dates and celebrating my birthday and stuff, but also I went to a house party. We went to a house party in September to celebrate another person's birthday. So September was just filled with lots of celebrating friends and family members, particularly us. And that was, I loved those moments for Lowe's. You guys, I talked about this on Instagram, but whenever our family told us they were going to put on this party for us, they did. And they deliver where I got the game all mixed up is where is I guess I just thought that all I would need to do is send out invites and like follow up with the invites to see what people's RSVPs were, whether they accepted or denied. And you wouldn't believe how much time and energy I had to put into that. And I don't even think the turnout, the turnout might've been neck and neck with this party that we had in August. So I was going to say it, our birthday party definitely was one of our largest parties. We had friends come in from three different states and then well four different states four or five different states so our folks were coming in from different places but there was just so much going back and forth about you know all I don't know people were giving excuses and they didn't even need to give excuses because I'm not the type of person who's going to be bent out of sorts about that type of stuff I guess what was different is that in my head I had low expectations for myself meaning I thought that all we needed to do was to produce a final head count and that that wouldn't be that difficult and it proved to be the most difficult of all and I think it was because people were maybe feeling more compelled or or maybe thought my feelings would be hurt since it was a birthday party I, the only thing I can think of is that maybe because it was a birthday party that that is why people were doing acting how they acted and it was very frustrating additionally yesterday i hosted the nicest function that i've ever hosted it was really expensive for my friend it was a bridal brunch bridal shower bachelorette brunch kind of thing and literally the day before three three people two people changed their invites to decline and then one person did, never said anything and when the two people declined I asked my friend to confirm with everyone else like if they were coming if they were not coming and one other person declined so basically we went from 11 to 8 and I had the table all set up for I actually did 12 just because it made sense to set up for 12 rather than 11 because of how the tables were anyway I had the place like all set up ready I had purchased things for 12 um, in the event that there was some other person who could attend you know I was I had so the point that I'm trying to make is that you know with these larger parties that we throw if we are expecting 35 and only 30 show up because five can't make it that's one thing because we've already prepared for 30 plus people but if I'm hosting an event this intimate this of this caliber and 11 people RSVP but only eight people show up then I mean that's a lot of money wasted a lot of food was prepared that didn't need to be prepared a lot of you know we did mimosas so a lot of bottles were purchased that didn't need to be purchased obviously this all falls on me but I was planning for a certain amount of people and so that was very frustrating for me so <laughs> you can bet that I that I made sure that that was known because that's the type of person that I am but anyway those were some of my low those were that that was a lot <laughs> for September okay I'm, a, I'm taking I'm very much taking a break from party planning of any sort 
for October and maybe for eternity, which is tragic because I really like it. But I was just so annoyed in September that I need a break. So let's talk about some lessons that I learned. First is that a lot of my favorite couples are separating, which is annoying. I just, it's just annoying. And I'm like, cause I don't keep up with the tabloids and the media and all of that, that will. So when I was looking, I was just like, mm, I cannot believe everybody's getting divorced. It's so, it's so sad. Next is that there is a lot of stimulation in this world. I went to uh, it's a restaurant with my husband and his aunt and friends and stuff to watch football, which I'm not a football fan, but I went and there were like, you know, there's like 50 TVs in the place with different games on. It's a lot of people. There's groups of like Falcons fans over here and Dolphins fans here and Steelers fans here and Cowboys here. And there's people are cheering for their different teams. And I was just sitting in there for like four hours, like observing. And I was like, wow. It's a lot going on in here. It's wild, I guess, to think. Oftentimes, I'm always thinking about what simpler times were like, I don't know, 50, 60 years ago. And I was just sitting thinking like, dang, we, I'm sure we went from never having the ability to go to a restaurant and there be a bunch of TVs around. And you know, like all of that too, that's where we are today. So it was just making me think about how overstimulating the world can be. Also, a lesson learned was that or that it doesn't have to be one that was learned. It could be, it doesn't have to be a newly learned lesson. It can be just something that I discovered or processed more or further explored or a lesson that I relearned. And one of those was that we do not have, have any strict marital roles. There is nothing that I have to do as a wife in this marriage. There's nothing that my husband has to do as a husband in this marriage, literally nothing. We just kind of play off of our strengths and our weaknesses. So there are things that I hate doing that my husband happens to not mind doing that works and vice versa. Or there are things that I'm really good at doing that I just do because I'm good at and same for my husband. So there's no real marital roles. We don't, we don't have that. And that was, you know, there's always a story behind why any of these things came up for me or made me, you know, made me think or whatever, but I'm not going to talk about all the backstories because we would be here all day. Another th lesson was that I have friends of all ages and I feel like this came up because we had gotten invited to a birthday party and I think she was turning like 53 or something. And then when we, when we were there, of course there were other 50, 60 year olds and we were the only people there in our thirties. And I was thinking, wow, I really do have friends of all ages, but you can thank work for that. I don't just randomly meet older people, normally just at work. Um, I learned a little bit about couponing. So my cousin who prepared the food for the brunch, we went out and we bought all the food and she's an extreme couponer. And so I was learning about couponing. I'm still, I mean, I doubt that I have any real knowledge compared to the average couponer, but I learned a good bit. I also learned that I'm not com confrontational, but no, I am confrontational, but I'm not an arguer. And by confrontational is, I guess you can think of it as such. If somebody does something to hurt my feelings, I'm going to immediately let them know that there's a 0% chance that this will linger or I'll act like it didn't hurt my feelings or whatever, 0% chance. So I'm going to immediately let them know, but there, I, I'm not an arguer. I don't sit around arguing with people, going back and forth. In fact, if I tell someone that they hurt my feelings, I don't expect to go back and forth about that or vice versa. If someone tells me that I hurt their feelings, I'm not expecting for us to have any argument about that just as an example. So that's just an example that I'm very much confrontational, probably more confrontational than the average person. I'd be willing to bet. I don't shy away from confrontation. I do shy away though from argue or arguing, sorry, cause I'm just not an arguer. I just don't see the relevance of it. I don't, I just can't be bothered. Another one is that we live in an unforgiving society. And I was thinking, um, I think there was something having to do with Will Smith. And anyway, I was just thinking about how people were so mad about that and are not able to forgive him. And I get that he plays a huge role in the world, like more relevant than the average person, way more relevant. But I was just thinking like, 
well, he didn't do anything to me or you or you or you. So the only person that has to forgive him would be the person that he did something to. And I just was thinking about how I'm definitely a forgiver. I forgive everybody for everything. I am not an unforgiving person. So just there was a situation that really just made me think about how unforgiving of a society we are, which is tragic because people shouldn't, you know, if, if, if a person makes a mistake, there shouldn't be a fear of, you know, being cut off or exiled or canceled or whatever. That's insane to me. But anywho, another lesson was that I don't involve my feelings in much. And this just came up for me the other day when I forgot the situation. I think I told the story on Instagram. Oh, I think it was my, my student. Uh, my student was frustrated and he thought that I was offended by his being frustrated or mad with him. And it was this whole long thing. And I just was thinking, well, A, I'm a forgiving person, but B, I don't involve my feelings in most matters. You know, even with finances, I can share how much money we earned, how much money we spent, whatever. My, I don't have any feelings related. To, there's no shame or um, embarrassment or any of that related to finances because I don't know why there would be for me personally because it just is what it is. Like what we earn is what we earn. I can't like control what I earn necessarily. I mean, I can to an extent, but when I'm thinking of my full-time job, you know, any job that I've ever had, they pay me, you know, they pay me what they pay me. Of course, I can ask for a raise. I can switch jobs. But for all intents and purposes, the jobs pay me what they pay me. So it's like it is what it is. There's nothing I can do about it. So I don't have any shame or embarrassment around the career path that I chose, the field that I work in. I just don't have a lot of feelings. My feelings aren't involved in a lot of matters. And I think where there's a discrepancy is that some people do involve their feelings in a lot of ma in a lot of matters and I don't I don't know it's just a thing is that I've been noticing over probably the past year maybe because my friend she's always she's always said this one of my best friends she's like do people not know you and I just laugh it off like haha I guess not but then more that I think about it I'm like well maybe they don't because anybody who knows me knows that like, it would take a whole lot. I extend grace, a lot of grace to people, okay? I am very forgiving. I, it would take a whole lot to kind of trigger me or, or bother me. And, and I just was thinking about one situation where I was telling her that I think that a person wanted to come to the party, but they were, or maybe they didn't want to come to the party, but they felt in compelled to come to my birthday party because I invited them. I mean, I understand that obviously, but my feelings wouldn't be hurt if a person can't make it to my birthday party. Like I'd be like, okay, and move on with my, it could be the best, my best, 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 best bud in the whole world. I'm not going to be sad about this. It's just not anything that I would be sad over because if people can't make it, they can't make it. They don't have to give me a reason. People don't owe me an explanation as to why, like how they live their lives. So anyway, I was just been thinking about that. And I'm like, I really don't think people do because, you know, my student would never know if I were upset with him or not. Like as far, if what he did would cause me to be upset, because what I'm saying is we don't, he doesn't know me. I know him, but he doesn't know me. So, you know, he would never know what would cause me to respond X, Y, or Z way, but I'm always honest about things. So I don't know. It was just, it's just something that I, that I thought about. Let's talk about my favorites. My favorite beauty item was this Ariana Grande perfume that I got in my Scentbird subscription, which I'm pausing by the way, cause I have like six perfumes that I'm trying to use and it's not going that well cause I'm just slow to use my perfume. Anyway, I got this Ariana Grande perfume and I was like, oh my God, I love this. So I've been wearing it all September. Also, my favorite tech item was the fall iPad accessories that I purchased. I did a video on that. My favorite food was Korean barbecue or Korean beef. We went to this food festival thing and I tried some Korean food. Oh my gosh, like I'm a 
says, I think about it daily. My favorite leisure activity was planning, like planning all the things that I planned because I did a lot of planning in September. Favorite activity was fellowshipping with friends and family members and loved ones. And my favorite lifestyle, my favorite from the lifestyle category was hosting. So I really enjoyed hosting this month. Not actually being the host, but just the idea of hosting. I don't need to be the host. I'm okay to never be the actual host, but to be like the host house, the host place. Like I like that. I like to be behind the scenes. I like having, like having my vision come to life and being behind all of that, not the actual hosting, if that makes sense. Here is my mood board for September. Basically photos from the brunch. That is so funny to me pictures from our birthday party and those are all from my birthday party that's from the day of my birthday we were out with friends this is a photo a screenshot from Facebook my husband first got me a gift and we first started celebrating each other's birthdays in 2013 so for 10 years we've been celebrating together so I thought that was cute because that was like the first birthday gift. It was the first birthday after we met and he got me this in particular and it was on Facebook. So I don't know if I got, I feel like I got him something. I don't know what it was, but I just know I posted what he got me, which was this Jay-Z album that I really wanted, Holy Grail, which is funny. This is us out to eat. We never take pictures. So we took pictures. I had a reading date with my friend by the pool, basically just party stuff. So this was the vibe and the mood for September. Okay, so the last thing that we need to talk about is our October goals, and we need to set those together. So, um, I think I may screen record just in case I do use screen recording. Okay, so That's we are in recording. October go goals, in my goes, in my notion, and we need to figure out what our goals are. So I have that I'm gonna take one personal day, but the thing is, I'm actually gonna change this because realistically, I really wanna take like three because I have off of work two weeks. In my district, we have a fall break as of this school year. This is our first time having one, and we are gonna be, I'm off work for the next two weeks. So I really want to take a personal day in the month of October. I have on here October the 2nd. I try to have tentative days, but in looking at my schedule, I can probably do October 2nd and October 2nd, 3rd and 4th because after that my days are kind of filled with other people and other things. So I think the first three days of October are going to be the days that I choose to take personal days. I don't think I will be able to take another personal day. What is this? What is happening? Just duplicate. I don't understand. No, just duplicate. Okay, we're not doing all that. We're going to go down here and we're going to do October. 3rd and October 4th. Oh, it's okay. I was gonna say the personal days are days that I spend by myself, but my friend actually will be in town conveniently those three days. So we're gonna hang out, but it's not gonna be until after work anyway, or after training. So that's fine. All right, read two books. I'm keeping that on here. And the books that I wanna read are Rebel King, I wanna finish it. And then Things We Hide From The Light. Nope, did I make that up? Things We Never Got Over. Which one is it? It's one of those. The, yeah, it's one of those. I think it's Things, let me look. Let me just look and see. Things We Left Behind. So I wanna finish Rebel King and then read Things We Left Behind. It's even in my planner. Let's see what else we wanna do. Self-care, go to the chiropractor, perhaps. Do nails, schedule OBGYN for self-care. You know what else I wanna do? One other thing. I want to do my, well, that's kinda like do my nails. I wanna do my feet. I might not have to do my nails because I did my nails last night on September 30th and my nails last a month. So I may not have to do my fingernails in October, but I do wanna do my, do my feet. Do my toenails is what we can call it do my toenails. What else do I want to do for self-care? You know, I was thinking about getting my eyebrows done. I have been growing my eyebrows out for over a year and 
that's because they needed to be grown out because they were looking scarce and it was looking crazy so I have been letting my brows grow out for a year I have not touched them I have I mean these are just what I'm working with naturally and I'm ready to get them threaded I think because I am of the impression that my my eyebrows are not going to grow anymore so it's time for me to go ahead and do with them what I want to do with them so let's do eyebrow threading perhaps all right for family purchase handmade I'm deleting that we're not going to purchase the handmade I doubt it yeah let's delete it um, problem solve the carpet shampooer perhaps oh hmm you know what I want to do mm. okay let's see what we what we want to do I think I should put on here some of the fall things that I want to do during my break and I need to differentiate what those are okay so I want to clean out my car I don't want to do any of this I guess I have to do that all right we'll leave this for family I want to clean out my car clean out my car I want to where did it go oh oh clean the doggy cover clean doggy cover that would be cool anything else I want to do okay that's it um, organized drawers problem solve shampoo or repair patio ceiling okay save what are we looking to save for October? I think we're looking to save, oh, nothing. So I think we'll save, by nothing I mean the bare minimum, which is always 275, 375. It's about 400. Save for, well, I think we could do 500. We're gonna do 500. Invest 80 via stash, invest 15% of paychecks. Relationships, schedule friend dates, which they're scheduled. Spend quality time with my cousins in, when we take the cousin's trip, and then catch up with a friend for career same stuff that's what I need to be doing during this break is studying but I probably won't business secure one sponsorship publish eight YouTube videos publish four Instagram reels I also want to I don't know where to put this but I kind of want to I kind of have a new category to add yeah mm, I kind of want to see if I can get ahead with my content that's asking a lot, but I would love to be two videos ahead. Like just to get ahead whenever I go back to work. So I feel like that's something I should be able to do. Is pre-record two to four videos. And that would be to record, batch record, really if I batch record one day during the break. Batch record during break. Like just one day I should be able to get this done. At least two videos, maybe three or four. Okay, and then for health, work out three times per week work out three times per week. I think that's good. We will leave that as such. The last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make a fall bucket list because I feel as though we should. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate the 2023 bucket list and we're gonna change this to fall 2023 bucket list and then we're gonna delete everything. Actually, taking cooking class is on the fall bucket list item list that I have so we're gonna leave that there because it just feels like a fall activity what else can we delete I think we could probably delete some of these because they're not applicable let's just change them so another thing I want to do is decorate for fall decorate for fall then another thing is to go to a pumpkin go to a pumpkin patch that could be fun to do during fall I've never done that a lot of things I haven't done. A lot of simple things I actually haven't done in life. <laughs> um, take a faraway trip. We ain't going nowhere. How about I want to do a solo Star Beach trip? And that's really because I like Starbucks and I just got a gift card for my birthday that I'll never use if I don't force myself to use it. So we'll do that. Attend a paint and sip with hubby. I kind of do want to do that, but I don't want the painting from, I don't know. We, we're not going to do that. Let's do visit a library. That's something that I want to do. And read, to read, of course. Then go apple picking. That's something that I want to do. And then I'll just show you the rest of the things, and then I'll add them to this off camera. Like, I'll come, I'll pause this and come back and do it. I want to bake an apple pie, 
burn a fall candle, host a fall inspired party, try a new soup or make a chili. I've never made a chili, but I make a lot of soups. Attend an NFL game, bake cookies, bake hot chocolate, go for a bike ride, take a scenic route to a new place, donate to a local food bank, build a blanket for it for a date night, buy apple pie wine. Yes, have a spooky movie night. And then one other thing I wanna do is have a romantic date night in because we have this new fancy setup now with like candles and all that and we could have a cute date night in have a romantic date night in all right let me add this to my bucket list on here i'll be right back okay so here's my fall 2023 bucket list i'm thinking that we're not gonna do all these things but it sounds good it sounds good and if ever we are trying to figure out what we might want to do with our lives we could reference this list, um, particularly for date nights, of course, but yeah, this list is pretty long. But some of the things are just things I wanna do solo dolo that I might do during my fall break and then other things I will do with my husband. And then from our 2023 bucket list, since it's almost over, I left on here some of the things that we still haven't done that are more fall-ish in nature and that take place during fall so that is my fall 2023 bucket list and i'll probably as i move forward in life just add new bucket lists down here let's change this one while we're here because that icon what do we want for oh they have icons i want an emoji what do we want for 2023 bucket list i guess we should do like a a plane doesn't that give off a bucket list vi bucket list vibes yeah that's like the only color on my whole page. But anyway, that is my 20 fall 2023 bucket list. And that actually brings us to the end of this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a like. Subscribe if you're new and if you're liking what you're seeing. And I will catch you guys right back here in a few days in a brand new video. Bye guys.